have and ever. Okay, so somebody said um, David had an interaction with his mentor before COVID. EMZ, of course, was two weeks ago. Um, somebody else over the net. Okay, uh, Sarah has been long. Somebody else last two months, one month. Okay, good. Because one of the biggest challenge I notice in this subject, people confuse role model for mentorship, right? So um, when someone is a mentor, you bring, you bring in 50% of the time and then the mentor brings in 50% of the time. So it actually involves a program. It involves some interaction. It involves a structure to help guide you in what he or she has done before and helping you to replicate the same. So a role model on the other hand, somebody you look, look at from afar, right? Uh, Nelson Mandela could be a role model. If, you know, if you want to be a leader in Africa, I want to go into politics, Nelson Mandela definitely has to be one of your role model, or it's certainly not your mentor. So many times our mentor are even people we don't know, people don't know rather than they may be people who are not even popular right? Because they're just people behind the scene, you know, for one reason or the other, have agreed to show you a path to success. So another question I want to ask uh, now is that how many of you then have a business mentor? If you have a business mentor type, I have a business mentor. If you don't have type, I don't have. Now, there are a lot of mistakes people make also here. They are business role models, Okay. But a business mentor is somebody who is almost in the same business as you are. And he or she is able to guide you on how to succeed in that same line of business. So I see, for example, somebody wanting to go into agriculture and then pick somebody who is a successful IT person as a business mentor. Something is wrong there. You have to look for somebody who has made it well in the... Now, this doesn't mean that you cannot have an IT mentor, even though you are not into ICT, right? Uh, that's not what I'm saying here. Because you can also have a financial mentor. You can also have a business role model. That doesn't need to be in the same field. But when you say somebody is my mentor, you can also have a coach, a business coach. Now, your business coach doesn't even need to be in your field, right? But somebody who is able to help bring out that which is on your inside. I needed to make this a more of a workshop because the last time I did a lot of motivation, but I want this to be more practical. I don't know if you are enjoying this. If you're enjoying it, type, I'm enjoying this. Come on, guys, talk to me. So what is often missing? I see people call their pastor their business mentor. Now that's wrong. Your pastor is your mentor preparing you for heaven, right? Helping you to learn how to make it to heaven. He cannot be your business mentor except your pastor is doing the same business as you are doing, right? Your pastor may also not likely be your financial mentor. And this is how people have messed up their lives where they end up blaming their pastors for their financial failures because they actually got the wrong person. Like in Nigeria, there's been a strong move against pastors. People are pissed off. People feel pastors have messed up their life. People are wondering why Nigerians could be poor when we are very rich pastors. But again, where we miss it is that we forget that the role of your pastor isn't to help you make money on this earth. It's to prepare you for heaven. So you might still be poor, even though you have some of the best pastors leading you. And your pastor may be rich. If he's able to get a business mentor and a financial mentor, who is able to help him or her? Is this making sense at all? If it's making sense, type it makes sense. So a mentor help direct, uh, um, help directly with exploring career, setting goals, developing contacts, identifying resources. Um, you know, of course, you can have a career mentor, but we're focusing on, you know, a business mentor for the purpose of this class. You could either pay to be mentor or work to get the person to mentor you. Now, I need you to know this. Mentorship is not free. Can everybody type it? Mentorship is not free. Everybody, come on, type it. Mentorship is not free. This is where we miss it in Africa, right? Let me give you an example. Before 
uh, um, Donald Trump became the president of the United States of America. His direct real estate mentorship program I heard was as, as much as 100,000 US dollars. Yes, you heard me. Yes, he's a billionaire. But his direct mentor, real estate mentorship program was 100,000 US dollars. Right? I also have attended a mentorship program in real estate that cost me $27,000 in the US. $27,000. And guys, you won't believe it, it was even online. You know, with a top billionaire who is into real estate. Mentorship is not free because it simply means the person leaves his or her business, the person leaves his whatever he or she is doing and is giving you unreserved attention and is guiding you and is very practical when you find a true mentor. It's very practical. For example, some of those that I have one-on-one -on -one mentorship with, I go to their offices, I go to their businesses, I check their books, right? I literally help them with their business as though it's my own business. I sometimes call my contacts to help them. I, you know, I do documentaries for them. I do marketing for them. I literally will sometimes do documentary and promote it on my wall to push their business. So it's real business. It's a, it's a serious thing when you find a good mentor that is helping you. It's all in, all the way in. So usually it will cost you something. And there are two ways to get a mentor. Is either you pay to get a mentor or you serve to get a mentor. There's a man, I know if you know a man by the name Dr. Mike Modoc. If you know Dr. Mike Modoc, that I know him, I know him, I know him. Okay, come on, talk to me. If you know Dr. Mike Modoc, type, I know him, I know him, I know him. Guys, I'm waiting. If you know Dr. Mike Modoc, type, I know him, I know him, I know him. Oh, beautiful. Some of you don't know him, but okay, good. Some of you know him. Now, Dr. Mike Modoc is one of the best wisdom experts that you can ever find in the world. He is exceptional in the area of in that subject matter of wisdom. What is wisdom? How to deploy wisdom. He is a great man. However, I've heard several times how Dr. Mike Modoc will shut down whatever he's doing, his ministry, his businesses, and go spend one year under somebody. One whole year to work for somebody else. Most of his mentorship has come from him having to serve people. There's also a man uh, who is also a, a, to be a pastor also by the name Kenneth, e, uh, uh, Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland used to be on a robot's pilot and worked with him and learned a whole lot of what he's doing today from our robots, right? Unfortunately, we don't find much of this in business. Some of those we've seen, we've seen the likes of it with a man by the name Jim Ron. I don't know if you know Jim Ron. Jim Ron is a great motivational speaker who was doing very well at a younger age, but started going through challenges and had to shut down everything he was doing and went to serve under a man for six years. And this man changed his life. Jim Ron died a millionaire right and was one of the fathers of motivational speaking now so one of the powerful ways to get a mentor is to go serve right you can leave whatever you're doing look for somebody who is very successful and seek for an opportunity to serve directly under them as a pa but whatever whatever capacity it must be directly under them because you want to feed up them you want to watch how they're doing the, what they're doing you want to learn by observation. It's one of the, I call it apprenticeship, right? So the other way is to pay. Some of them have coaching programs. Unfortunately, most billionaires in Africa do not own coaching programs. We need more of this. No matter how much they're going to charge you, I imagine Dangote, Alinko Dangote, the richest black man, has a coaching program on manufacturing. How many manufacturers will he has mentor and raised in the continent of Africa? Imagine um, Mrs. Alakija, who is the richest black woman, have decided to mentor people in the area of oil and gas. How many people, young entrepreneurs in that area of oil and gas will we have today? Okay, Tony Lumelu is doing a great job mentoring people, um, you know, doing it virtually. But we need more of that. We need more of that. We need more mentors in Africa. 
who will leave their business and host younger entrepreneurs and begin to show them. Now, I don't care whether they charge or they ask you to come and work for them. It certainly has to cost you something, right? It definitely has to cost you something. Again, if you're enjoying this, can you type, I'm enjoying this, I'm enjoying this, I'm enjoying this. Okay, so mentoring entails informal communication, usually face-to-face during a sustained period of time between a person who is perceived to have greater relevant knowledge, wisdom, or experience, that's the mentor, and a person who is perceived to have less uh, knowledge, which is called a protege. It's important that you pick a good mentor and not a bad one. And one of the principles I teach when it comes to this subject matter of mentorship is that make sure that you have specific mentors for specific roles. Like I told you earlier, many of us in Africa are frustrated with our pastors because we didn't stick to their main core role of mentoring us to get to heaven. And some of us got busy trying to get our pastors to mentor us to make it on earth. That's not their basic function or role. So that you have a great pastor does not mean you shouldn't still go ahead and look out for a business mentor. Now, watch it here. Your mentor is never going to be a perfect person. So you may be a Christian and then your mentor is a Buddhist. I have mentors who don't believe that Jesus exists. Okay? And it doesn't matter. I didn't go to them to learn how to go to heaven or how to serve Jesus. I went to them to learn how to make it as a businessman. So we have to learn how to be, you know, focus and, and have mentors that are customized to the specific area we need help rather than just have one, met, you know, one you know, um, um, person fitting all the various roles, right? You may have the best business mentor and then it's the worst marital person, right? Failure when it comes to marriage, but it's very successful in his business. So you need to understand this. So when I pick a mentor, I'm not after his weaknesses. I'm not after what doesn't work in his life. I'm just after that specific reason I decided to pick the person as a mentor. And I focus on that area and I'm very focused on learning and growing under that person. And this is where people miss it. A lot of us pick people as a mentor and then immediately you're looking for the errors. You're looking for their faults. They say, oh, it's not perfect. Well, nobody's perfect. Even you, you are not perfect, are you? So get a mentor that is good in a specific area and you just focus on that area with that mentor. And then some other areas you look for somebody else. For example, most of, virtually all my business mentors are never my marriage mentors because it's really difficult to be able to have them play those both roles. So I just pick you, you are helping me with business and I go look for somebody else to help me with making sure my marriage works. Is this making sense again? Guys, if it's making sense, can you type, it's making sense, it's making sense, it's making sense. Like I told you, I wanted today to be a workshop so that it's very practical, um, you know, and again, if you think this is practical, just type practical, practical, practical. Guys, come on, talk to me. If you think today's session is practical, just type practical. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, Julie says it's practical. Harriet says it's practical. Jackie, okay, good. Peter, everybody says practical. I'm happy to know that. So let's look at types of mentoring relationship that different types of mentoring relationships okay uh, and i'm going to take a lot of your questions today we're not going to rush like we did the last time i believe i'm the last speaker for, for um you know to end the entire conference so hopefully we'll take questions as long as you're not in a hurry to go back home uh, but you're even at home so hopefully um first one is a formal um, or informal mentor, right? So, for example, formal could be you work in Apple, okay? Apple as a company, and you decide to look for somebody who's in a more senior position who's been with Apple for maybe 10, 20 years, and then you go walk up to the person and say, please, I want you to mentor me on how to succeed in my career working here at Apple, right? That's a formal one, Okay. Now, you can have some informal one also where the person is still your mentor, but there's nothing formal about it. Um, it's very informal. We are, let's go to, to, to the location of 
work. You know, there's nothing, sit down, get a paper, get a pen. There's a book, there's a class to attend. You know, there's nothing like that. So informal. You also have one-on-one -on -one mentors um, or peer group uh, mentees where you then have a mentor bring a group of 10 people, 20 people together, and then it's coaching all of you together, right? You have those kind of relationships. You also have traditional senior and junior uh, mentoring arrangement, okay? Your older brother, uncle, mentoring somebody a lot younger or a more successful person mentoring somebody a lot younger. You also have single or multiple mentorship relationship where it's a group of three people mentoring you together, okay? And they know each other and have decided to come together and they are helping you in different aspects of this whole relationship. Um, you also have assigned mentor or mentee where somebody call you and say, you know what, I need you to help me help this person. Help me mentor this person, um, you know, and help this person make it. Uh, I would like if the coordinator can start writing down some of the questions people are already typing so that we don't lose some of them. Um, we also have short-term mentoring or sustained. We also have target mentoring and so on and so forth. Okay, so different types. However, there are two major entrepreneurial mentorship relationships. Now, the first one is called business mentor. A business mentor is someone who is more experienced than you are in a specific business, okay? And is, you know, guiding you and directing you to succeed in that same business. So for example, somebody has been to farming business for 40 years and has built a whole lot of success, wealth in that area. The person decides to say, I want to show you the way, right? The second type is called investor, okay? You need to have a business mentor and an investment mentor. An investment mentor, on the other hand, is mentoring you on how to spend your money, how to manage your money well. So a lot of times, and I tell people there are two major ways to build wealth. It's either you, are, you own a business with a system or you're an investor, right? So a business mentor takes care of business where an investment mentor takes care of your investment. So you have, um, you have $10,000 and you don't know what to do with it. You need an investment mentor. The both of them are not the same. However, there are some people who can play both roles, maybe because of their lifestyle, right? So an investment mentor shows you how to make money work for you, while a business mentor shows you how to build a system, okay, um, of business that can work with or without you, right? So there are two different types of mentors you need in this area. So make sure you get a business mentor and make sure you get an investment mentor. Business mentor helps you to perfect a system, build a system around your business, okay, and automating your business and making sure your business is efficient and profitable, while an investment mentor helps you to manage your money. is able to say, no, 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 put your money in these shares. It's going to multiply. Buy this type of property. It's going to work. Um, buy this kind, you know, kind of instrument. You know, the person understands how to, make, manage, multiply money, how to make money work for you rather than work for money. You need these two types of people. So next question I want to ask, if you have these two types of mentor, type, uh, type two, if you have only one of them, type one, if you don't have any one of them, just type none. Okay, come on, guys, let's talk to each other. Okay, if you have two of this type of mentor, type two, if you have just one type, type one, if you don't have any type none, wow. Wow. So how many of you, I can say a lot of none here. How many of you will go get one today? If you go and get one today, type, I must get one. I'm getting one. I'm getting one. Come on, guys. Talk to me. If you will go get one today, type, I'm getting one. I'm getting one. So you can see where the gap is. I hope my organizers, I mean, my, uh, and those who invited me and the organizers of this event can do us a favor of helping to uh, create something around this for participants of this event, right? Among some of the speakers that came. Uh, I know I may not be effective for most of you here, um, but let's have, a, let's help, you know, get, uh, for many of you, I'm just as good as a role model for you. But I hope the organizers can help us get people uh, to help fill this gap. Because this is why we don't succeed in business, right? This is why entrepreneurship is difficult in Africa because this gap is missing. 
and nobody is talking about it. Nobody is trying to solve it. Not government. Nobody. Now there are a couple of great mentors we've seen who, are, who have come across, you know, come around in Africa. Jason Woku, founder of Iroko TV, is a Nigerian guy who came in the scene and started concept around the movie industry, how to mentor people and help them succeed in the movie industry. And he's done a fantastic job. We have, of course, Bethlehem uh, Alemu um, from Ethiopia, founder of Soul Repel, one of the popular and fast growing African footwear brands in the world. Okay, a shoe has been sold in more than 50 countries across the world, including Canada, US and Japan. Okay, she's also established a fashion brand uh, from the business, okay? These are great people that we need to have more of. Of course, one of the organizers of this event, Paul Wafula. Come on, can we celebrate Paul, everybody? I thought everybody would, would help me celebrate Paul, okay? Who is one of the organizers of this event, um, will go a long way as a mentor for a whole lot of you here. Uh, and directly help him to, I, I believe he's already doing that, um, you know, and even this event is part of that, as well as other people. I mean, I'm sorry if he's the one I'm bringing forward because he's the one I know, okay? I know there are a lot of other people who organize this who are, you know, playing that role of mentor. But Dr. Pepper was somebody who has also been a mentor to me in business. He, he was already a CEO of a mortgage bank at the age of 23. Right when I met him a couple of years ago, I was able to understand the dynamics of running business in Africa. And he was of great tremendous help for me. Even when I had some issues with government, he helped He's a lawyer of over 35 years uh, or so. There's Grand Cardon, right? Grand Cardon, for those of you who are going to real estate, this is definitely a role model, right? For me, I have some form of mentorship relationship. I, I'm, I'm a student of his coaching programs and all that. But this is somebody you can start from role model and hopefully later he becomes your mentor, okay? Uh, remember, sometimes it's the level of proximity that determines the, that is the difference between a role model and a mentor, right? It's the proximity. So somebody can, you can start with somebody as a role model and then as you get closer, the person becomes a mentor because true mentorship has a program. As a, you know, it's very, it's very deep. It's deeper than just I'm watching somebody from afar. But Grant Cardone is a top guy in the real estate sector. You cannot be mentored by Grant Cardone and not succeed in real estate. This guy is a genius, right? Uh, and his energy is amazing. We also have Ezra um, Suruma, right? Ezra is a Ugandan economics banker and academic. Um, he's become a chancellor of Makarere University in January 2016. He formerly served as a senior advisor to the president of Uganda. He's a role model uh, to some of you. How many of you are from Uganda here? And you, you consider uh, Ezra as a role model. If you do type, he's a role model, come on. If you are from Uganda and you consider this man as a role model, can you type, he's a role model? Okay, so, these are examples we're having here. Um, of course, yours truly, Stephen Akintyre, okay? Um, with all sense of humility, you know, I've authored 35 books. They're all on Amazon. Started my business 2008 with just a $10 and I've, you know, 1,000 naira. And I've grown it to a multi-billion naira, multi-million dollar corporation today. Okay, so I know if you think uh, I, I fit into that role. If you think I fit in, type fit in, fit in. Come on, guys, talk to me. Okay, so um, this is very important and this is very key. Role model, uh, roles of entrepreneurs in Africa is poor economic, or in particular mentors. Mentors poor economic growth. I cannot overemphasize that. Uh, improve standards of living. Look at um, Dangote. Dangote was mentored by Dan Teta, right? Without Dan Teta, we would not have the man who is said to be the richest black man. This is key, okay? Uh, it increased social change. It helped in community development. It creates employment opportunities because if I can mentor 10 people, those 10 people can mentor another 10 people. 
before you know we're changing the world, we're changing Africa. It builds self-confidence for youths especially. There's something about you having a successful person mentoring you. You are bold, you are confident, you know that if anything goes wrong, somebody has your back. Somebody's going to be there for you. It is powerful. It helps build character knowing you have someone you don't want to let down. So having a mentor helps build your character. You know there's somebody you don't want to disappoint. It gives people a guide to build their career. It's increasing the personal relationship skill. It provides important networking contacts for mentees. So this is um, a key one. One of the greatest values of mentor is the ability to see ahead what others cannot see and help them navigate a course to their destination. Okay, this is by John C. Maxwell. I know if you agree, this is one of the major roles of mentor. Okay, they what they see ahead what the mentee cannot see. They are able to see it and they help you navigate a way around it. They help you channel a course. Okay, they help you figure it out even before you get there. And this just open those doors. Let me start by saying one of the best ways to start a mentorship relationship is actually by reading books of mentors. I've written 35 books. They're all on Amazon. One of those books is business mentorship. I detail the reason why you need a business mentor, the importance of a business mentor, the role of business mentors in Africa, and how to build great businesses having mentors, and how to manage those relationships. Because of time, I'm not able to emphasize how to manage mental relationships. Because it's very important to know that it's another thing to get a mentor. It's another thing to know how to manage it well. It may sometimes be easy to get a mentor, but it's harder to maintain a mentorship relationship. Number one rule, that I'll, I'll just give you a few rules of mentorship. Number one, never beg your mentor for money. I've never done it. The person is free to, to buy his or herself, support you if you need it. But never, if I never have the intention of picking a mentor because you want them to give you money, it just, it just mess up that whole entire relationship because there's also some degree of respect that you want to get from your mentor and they respect you better when you are not coming to them for handouts. The whole goal is that you want to replicate their success and not get handouts from them. In Africa, we've missed this area. An average person see a successful African, the first thing he's asking for is give me money, help me, my bills, my children's school fees. We need to begin to focus on learning how to fish rather than begging for fish. We've begged too much for fish. And that's what the white people have done. They've enslaved us. They took our gold. They took our diamond. Imagine what the Western countries do. Imagine how a Western country will come take your cocoa and then send you chocolate. And then you are happy to buy chocolate at a higher price and you sell cocoa to them at peanut. We've been cheated. We've been slapped to our faces and it's because of this handout concept. Imagine how the Western world, we ask you to save all your money with them. Okay? And end up, at the end of the day, this same Western world, we end up telling you, after you save your money to, with them, they will not give you an aid. That is less than 0.000% of the money you saved with them. Okay, I've heard so much terrible things that is going on in Africa. Where African leaders go save their money with European powers. And then you will still come and borrow a fraction of that money at 10% interest. It's ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. We need to wake up. We can mentor ourselves. We can build great businesses by ourselves. And we can lead ourselves but we need to mentor ourselves. We need to respect each other. And it begins by getting a book of a mentor. Okay, so a lot of this book, they're on Amazon and they're on my website, stimakita.com. You can go get them. Uh, you can also follow me across social media handle. Um, and they're attached on the screen. Another rule of mentorship that I shared earlier, never look at the weakness of your mentor. Focus on their strength. Number three rule of mentorship, Honor your mentor publicly and privately and defend them. I have a few mentors that people always abuse on social media. 
I come on social media and I defend their interest. Listen, there is just no point you wanting to get from a mentor and you cannot defend that mentor. It doesn't make sense. I've attracted some people, some mentors, just by going to their social media and defending them, right? When I see people, you know, social media is just quite bullish, right? People just say anything. And I'll just go and defend them. And before you know, they reach out to me and say, thank you for defending me. I'm shocked somebody who I don't even know can defend me like that. So you need to know that you need to defend whoever is your mentor. Now, I'm not saying you should defend them foolishly, right? But you have to be there, right? There are times people have criticized my mentors on social media. I give them another perspective they may not have been seeing about those people. But if you say somebody is your mentor, you can't even talk about them. And that's why a lot of times I do a whole article around my mentor and I will tag them on social media. These are some of the ways to attract a mentor, right? Because some of you will probably ask me, how do I attract a mentor? Go to their social media for the next six months and be commenting. Anything they do, comment, say something. Tag them, right? Write a beautiful piece about them. Say something. Be the one to give before asking. That's one of the best ways to ask, attract a mentor. Don't go and say, please mentor me, please mentor me. That's what everybody say to them. But go and do something for them. Okay, help them to edit some of their posts. Help them to write articles. Just do something, right, in the area of your skill. And you will begin to attract great people around your life, okay? I want to say a big thank you for listening. And I want to, again, thank the organizers of this event for having me. God bless you all. I look forward to seeing great businesses emerge from this conference. I pray for everybody watching that God of heaven is just going to open you up into a new dimension of business explosion and success. That we're going to begin to have millionaires and billionaires from across the countries of, you know, those watching here. And you just start. It will just be like a joke and you will just emerge. But do not forget, you are an African. Be proud of your heritage and don't let anybody take that from you. We are not perfect. We're not there. There's so many challenges we're facing in Africa. But please and please know that the Western world has faced it too. Sometimes we look at our politicians, how they mess us up and embarrass us. But guess what? It's happening in America. American democracy is over 200 years, right? They've made their mistakes too. And you can see recently what's happening in the U.S., uh, how the U.S. is washing our dirty linen outside and the world is saying, Listen, nowhere is perfect. Nowhere is paradise. We need to start believing in Africa, believing in our businesses, believing in our ideas. The solution is not in the Western world. They don't have the solution. They are not smarter than us. We will make this continent great. We just need to look inwards and provide solutions to our challenges, provide our own businesses, patronize our, our African businesses, patronize Africa, love Africa, drink Africa, smell Africa, you know, taste Africa and defend Africa and preach to Africa and of course criticize Africa, right? But by every means, do business in Africa, stand by Africa and make sure your wealth, your money will stay here in Africa, your assets stay here in Africa. Some of you may be politicians who watch this. Even if you steal African money, use it to start a business in Africa. It's a shame that you steal African money and then you take it to Europe and UK and continue the colonization. It's a shame. I hope we'll make a change. I love you all and thank you for listening. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that, that was amazing, Stephen. I mean, we we are more than, than humble to be sitting at your feet and learning. Again, I don't, I don't say this lightly, but I know that the things that you're teaching here uh, worth a few thousand dollars. So thank you for donating of, uh, of that great resource to, to help us learn. Um, now, like you said, you, you are indeed the last speaker. And so what we're going to do is try and take as many questions as we can. And I want to encourage everyone who is on the call with us to try and ask as many questions as you can. Don't, don't lose this opportunity. So uh, any questions that you might have that come to your mind, don't be shy. Go ahead. Go to the Q&A. Uh, on your screen, there's a Q&A, hit that, and then ask any questions that you have, and we'll try and go through as many of those as we can with Stephen while we have him. Uh, I'll start with some of the questions that have come from the chat, Stephen. The first one is someone who is asking, we've got a lot of Christian businessmen 
who have been very successful, but don't seem to be willing to, to mentor us. Um, how do you go about getting someone like that to mentor you because you see that they've been very successful and yet they seem to be a bit reluctant to become your mentor? Is it something you, you kidnap their kids and force them to mentor you? How, how do you go about getting someone like that to become a mentor for you? That's a very, very good question, and I've seen that a lot. So what I realize is that one of the biggest challenges we face, uh, once you become successful in Africa, remember the last time I talked about the crap mentality, is that you then face everybody wants from you. Yesterday, we, our company honored a particular woman, the oldest actress in Nigeria, you know, with uh, a couple of thousands of dollars, you know. And you will not believe it, my WhatsApp number has been full of requests for money. Everybody has just been sending me requests. Help me, give me money, help me, help me. And I just, I'm just like, we're getting it wrong. We're getting it wrong. So the reason why it looks as if some of these people don't want to mentor is that everybody's on their neck for help me, help me. Now you may be seeing it that you are the only one, but you're, you, know, you don't know other people who are reaching out to say, help me, help me, help me. So how do you then make yourself different? For everybody has a problem. Everybody has a problem. I don't care how perfect their life look. And usually what is their problem is usually not what is your own problem. I remember a, a leading pastor in Nigeria, his name is uh, uh, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And I remember one day he was preaching his church and he said, my son died. And he had an interpreter. So the interpreter was shocked and kept quiet. And he had to repeat it again. I said, I said, my son died. You know, he had to interpret. He was shocked. And I said, this son was so dear to me. He said, whenever I'm in London, is my son help me with my laundry, helps me with my transportation, my logistics. Uh, you know, he was just there. He said, if you won't believe it, the last time I was in London, I went to see him in the hospital bed because he was sick to pray for him. On my way going, he had to ask me after prayer, Daddy, um, who will handle your laundry? Who will handle your food? You know, I had to tell him, my son, just be well. All I need for you is be well. He said, as he left the hospital, he had called his friend to go and arrange that the Geo's itinerary. Now, who can believe a man like Pastor Ia Deboye, who is said to be among the 100 most influential people in the world, Right, we'll be needing something as basic as itinerary management, laundry in London. Right, so if you look carefully, you will find the need that your mentor or your potential mentor has and find a way to humbly serve them in that area. Humbly, and I repeat, humbly. I've had people watch out, reach out to me on social media claiming they want to help correct my articles. You know, and then they are so rude about it. This is even you are an international personality. There shouldn't be this kind of error, you know, your write up. And I'll be like, well, thank you for your grammar. With all my error, I still became international. Now, with all your perfection, how international are you? Right? So get out of my world, my friend. So you need to not get them upset. You also need to do it in a very humble way. Because many of these people could afford to pay somebody to do it. So let them know that it will be a privilege, it will be a honor. I want to help in this area, you know, and that is another way. Another way is also go to their social media and particularly if they're active on social media, compliment them again and again, write them. The last one that I have worked, that has worked for me, I have never approached anybody that this doesn't work, right? You could do a gift. I remember one of our friends wanted to um, get um, to attend the international court, to, to go to the international court and work there. And um, he was from a very poor background, didn't have connection, and we gave him this advice. Who is the head of that, that court? Can you so go to Abel Kuta, one of the states in Nigeria? There's this unique attire, right? It's called Adire. Then he just guessed a measurement and then designed the idea in a, in a measurement, used DHL, wrote, you know, you know, you're a wonderful person, and this is just for me a gift to you. 
and then put his, his phone number and his email. Guess who called weeks later? The same woman. She said, I don't know you from anywhere. I'm shocked you sent me a gift. You know, and he just said, I appreciate what you do. I've been studying you, Ma. You, you know, you know, do you know what the next question was? How can I help you? He said, Ma, I've been trying to, you know, work at the international court and all of that. He said, do me a meal. And that was how he got an assets. So gifts are powerful. The Bible says the gift of a man create room. A lot of people think gifts in that scripture means talent. No, the gift in that scripture means when you give somebody a fiscal gift, which is part of what corruption is doing in Africa. Because when somebody gives you money, you are not able to say, no, no, the road you did is bad, right? You are not able to say, that's what he's talking about, room. It creates a room for excesses. It creates room for you to be able to demand and ask even some things that you don't deserve. So play with gift. You, and let the gift not be something about money. It could be their portrait. A young lady from Cameroon did a portrait for me and, and she couldn't even send it to me in Nigeria, but sent me the picture. I was moved. I was humbled. So things like that are ways you can assess people like this. Study them. Study what will wow them. Right? Study what will wow them and find a way uh, you know, to kind of push that across. I promise you, if you can do that, you will attract great mentors. But social media works. But again, when you keep commenting, you are writing about them, you're tagging them. I'm not saying you should be a psychophant, right? But, you know, co co you know uh, um, and I well analyze compliments, right? And, and follow-ups, you know? And nowadays, it's easy to get people to, in a way, become your role model and mentor you from afar through their books. And of course, through, um, you know, what they do on social media. I hope that answered the question. Um, I, I think it sort of did. Uh, thanks a lot. I had you at the beginning say something about WhatsApp and asking money. Can you please send me your WhatsApp number in private chat? I need to ask for some money. Uh, if, if you could, you know, kindly do that. Um, oh. it, it, some some more questions for you here. Um, I, this I did. is coming in from <laughs> someone who is saying, "Can you please?" Sorry, go ahead, Steve. Did you say you didn't hear some part of what I said about WhatsApp? No, no, I was just saying, I heard you saying something about WhatsApp and money. I was asking you to send me your WhatsApp number so I can ask you for some money. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Got> you. <laughs> I know, right? Um, right, so uh, ne next question for you. Um, this is coming in from someone called Isaac. Um, he says he's in the same industry as you. Uh, especially in the area of digital marketing and product development, and he wants to grow. What does he do about getting mentorship from someone like you? But I, I think I'm going to try and write, um, read some of the questions for you so you can try and deal with as many of them as possible at the same time so we can get as many as possible. Anne is also asking, um, what other ways can you maintain the relationship? Because you mentioned that it's important to maintain the relationship once you have it. Uh, what are some of the ways to make sure that you can maintain that relationship. And then the last one for now is from Victoria, who is asking, how do you know how to choose and uh, especially if you happen to admire many people? So how do you go about choosing uh, the person who should be the, the best mentor for you? So deal with those and then I'll, I'll fix some more in a moment. Thank you very much. Um, well, you can reach my office if you want, if you're into digital marketing and you want to join my mentorship program. I think the number is at, that has been posted. Um, so you can just call them. Um, they we will run different mentorship programs. It's not free, by the way. Um, but another way to be mentored by me for free is my YouTube channel. I've done over 800 videos there. So, um, so I tell people free mentorship ends on YouTube. So, I mean, if somebody takes time to do it, it took me over three years to, to produce all those video trainings. Um, so you could go there if you want free mentorship. Is there over 800 videos? Um, but you want paid mentorship? Just call the office. They have some programs that are available for you. Uh, plus two three four eight one eight zero 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 six one eight. Now to the next question, really is um, what other ways to be able to kind of maintain relationship with mentors? I, I feel 
is to also be their interest, they go after their interests, right? You know, care for what they care about, know what the project they are currently doing and help them in achieving those projects. I have a mentee that I've been able to mentor. This year, I'm, I'm, I'm mentor. Last year, he did almost a million dollars in his business. I, I, he's one of those I do one-on-one -on -one mentorship with. This year, he's going for $1.5 million in his business, and I'm mentoring him. So this guy is quite good with issues like creating sales funnel, um, Facebook adverts. He will leave Port Harcourt, which is another city from Lagos, where I live, where my headquarters is, and come and train my staff. You know, he is in a staff group, you know, drawn mentorship for my staff also. Can you see now? So I'm helping him grow his business to a bigger level while he's also, you know, providing some help to my, to my staff to be able to help us grow a bigger brand, right? So, um, you know, find, just find a way while they are helping, that, make sure it's not parasitic. That's how you grow that relationship. Find a way. I know another, one of my mentors who got it, another mentor, he's a media guy. So he told the other mentor, anything media you're doing, I'm just going to handle it for you. Don't pay any amount. So it helps him coordinate his press conference, things like that. So just make sure you're not a parasite. You're adding some value in some shape or form. You are providing some things in one shape or form. Because that's where we often miss it. You see people then go and say, you're my mentor. Um, I, I see you as a mentor and all of that. But you're not, you're not providing any form of service value. I mean, you're not just being... Are valuable in any shape or form. So the last question, um, if you can repeat the last question again, um, was a lady. Um, the last question was, if you admire many people that could be potential mentors, um, how do you go about deciding uh, if one of them is probably the best one? I think many of us uh, go through this um, mentorship prostitution, I call it. <laughs> You know, but I always advise that you ask yourself, where am I going right now? Somebody say, if you don't know where you're going, you follow other people to where they are going and discover you've got to nowhere. So focus on where you're going right now. For example, personally, I'm big on real estate right now. So I'm only focused on getting real estate mentors, right? So I'm not going round and round and round. Real estate is priority for me. Now, maybe once I get my real estate to a level that I desire, I can then, and I'm about passionate about another type of business, at that point, I can then look for another mentor in that specific area of business to help. So make sure that you, you focus on where you are right now, where you're going right now, priority journey or destination right now, and then look for a mentor in that you know, destination and the person help you out. For example, you can have an investment mentor who is a millionaire, right? And because you are not yet a millionaire, that's the person you're following. But as soon as you become a billionaire, it doesn't mean you cancel your millionaire mentor, but you start looking for a billionaire mentor. Because the challenge, the, the strategies to become a billionaire is different from that of a millionaire. And I had to do that myself, right? Where today, most of those who are my mentors must be a billionaire in dollars. Okay, um, you know, so that I'm able to then learn what I don't know yet. I'm already in millions of dollars. I want to get to the billions of dollars now. Um, right. So you you talked about how uh, I mean you started your business with with very little money, managed to grow it to a um, a multi million dollar business that it is right now. We've got uh, someone here who. They leave their name, but they're asking, saying, look, they've managed to, um, they have some very few savings, a few hundred dollars or so, uh, which I guess by African standards is not very little money. And they're saying, would it make sense to try and find a mentor to help them start a business that will sort of grow to your level? And how, how on earth do you go about starting a business from scratch if you have very little money, but not necessarily the ideas? in terms of what to do to get a, a business going. Um, what was it like for you to start with, you know, the $10 to, to where you are? What were the key drivers, I guess, that helped you go from um, that point to, to grow that? Maybe it'll probably help uh, answer this person's question. 
I love that question. I really love that question. I thank you, the person who asked that question. Life is in phases, men are in sizes, leave your size part time. My first business mentor, if I mention his name, you don't know him. And I think that's where people miss it, right? So um, you hear somebody is a millionaire or billionaire, and then you say, yes, yeah, that's my mentor. It doesn't work that way. Go back to your village or your city and look for who is around you who is a bit higher than you are in what you're doing and start there, right? Over time, because some of these things also, there's a level of success. I mean, look at the major that I showed in my slide. The major is the, is the, um, is one of the richest black men in America. It's, um, you know, of course his, his net worth is in hundreds of millions of dollars, but he's done over $6 billion in transaction. Uh, he's the only black guy on Shark Tank. However, Damien John also started his business very small. But it, they, I met Damien John 2018, after following him for many, 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 many years. And when I say many, many years, I've been following Damien John. And you won't believe it, it cost me, of course, thousands and thousands of dollars to go see him. I traveled from Nigeria um, to Florida. I checked his itinerary. I knew he was going to be in Florida. And I went to, he was launching his books. And that was how I had to go catch him up there. So, um, and that's why I said, life is in phases, men are in sizes. You want to leave your size part-time. So you ask yourself, where am I right now? And, uh, you know, who is it at this moment who I, I, I may probably able to assess easily at, as at where I am, because that's where we often miss it, right? So uh, I'm not yet in a place where I can attract a millionaire mentor, but yet I'm insisting my mentor must be a millionaire. No, it doesn't work that way. So start somewhere. Also, I would say in terms of um, um, starting, go online. Like I mentioned earlier, that I'm able to mentor a whole lot of you from my videos and courses for free. You start there, a day will come where you then can afford to physically meet me and then have that conversation around, hey, Mr. Steven. And I've had that experience with many people. They may just started mentoring me, if we use that word, from Shark Tank, right? You watch Shark Tank, you admire the first black guy there. You know, say one day, hopefully, I will build a relationship to be able to meet this person and be able to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? But it took years to get there. So life is in phases, men are in sizes, you leave your size part-time. Start from where you are, watch the online video courses. Somebody's talking, I have $200. E-commerce is big business. Freelancing is big business. Affiliate marketing is big business. Like you can start with a few dollars, few hundreds of dollars. Um, of course, you know, even helping people become authors or online publishing is something you can learn and then begin to charge people a token to help them do the same. Um, and over time, you evolve into bigger businesses. Like I said, I didn't start with real estate. Okay, the business I started with was just uh, selling bulk SMS. So you evolve into now bigger things because that's, again, where people miss it. We, you know, and I think the youth of nowadays is one of our biggest problems. We want to start big. Let me give this quote. Only the great starts from the top. Everything great starts from the bottom. Start small, think big, and grow fast. I'll repeat that again. Only the great starts from the top. Everything great starts from the bottom. Start small, think big, and grow fast. Wow, uh, I like that. <laughs> Only the grave starts from the top. That's definitely a quotable quote for, for us to pick up on. Um, here's another one for you. Someone is saying um, about the mentor mentee relationship. Does it necessarily have to be a, a male male relationship? Can I be mentored by a woman if I'm a man? Um, how does that work? But also tied to that, the issue of age demographic. Can I be mentored by someone who is younger than me? Because normally when you think about a mentor, you usually think about someone who is 
twice your age or something like that. Um, is yeah. it possible to be mentored by someone who maybe is younger than you? Absolutely. Fantastic question. Yes, you can have a female mentor, even though you are a male. You can have a male mentor, even though you're female. Remember, it's a professional mentorship relationship. It's business. For the purpose of what we're discussing, it's business mentorship. So there's nothing sexual there. Also, in terms of age, I think age is one of the biggest uh, uh, weapon that has brought Africa down. You know, everything is age for us, right? I'm older than him. He's younger than me. I tell people, you don't use that, that to collect money in the bank. So, uh, in fact, I advise people, I say, look, if, you, if the subject of age, okay, being age conscious can be removed from your life, you are half wealthy. I'm not kidding you. Because when you look at many of those God we used to mentor, my first mentor actually was younger than I do. And socially, he wasn't at my level, right? Uh, and he was even physically challenged. True story. I remember I would go to his house and I'd say, oh, God, I've come. And if you know the concept of mentorship, what you owe a mentor is honor. So even though you're older than the person, you have to still talk to them with courtesy, with honor. And so I'll go to this guy you know, oh, my guy, I've come, or oh, my boss, I'm here, you know, I say I should wait for him, I could wait for another 30 minutes, one hour before he attends to me. Um, but I was very humble with that whole process. I made sure that I kept my, my esteem, my ego in check. Uh, some of us actually have low self-esteem, and we need to keep it in check when dealing, trying to get a mentor, because um, you are the one who need help. So sometimes you mean, what's, what's wrong with him? I've been trying to call him, he won't pick my call. And he doesn't owe you anything. I tell people, nobody owes you anything. You owe yourself everything. Nobody owes you anything. You owe yourself everything. So, you know, no means next opportunity. And that's also another thing you have to learn when trying to get a mentor. You will get many no's and there's nothing wrong with it. Many people will say no to you. Can everybody help me type? No means next, op next opportunity. Come on, guys, help me type that. No means next opportunity. So that people said no to you is not that bad. Um, it's not that bad. Build that thick skin to be ready to get a no from somebody you want to mentor you. And don't have low self-esteem enough. Say, well, are you are not God. I asked you to mentor me. You want to come on, calm down. He or she owes himself everything and owes you nothing. We need to destroy entitlement mentality in Africa. People don't owe you. They have their own personal life and business to take care of, right? So uh, it's important that you, you understand that. No means the next opportunity. Uh, some of us have had a lot of next opportunities and we, we keep going, but I know for a fact eventually the actual next opportunity does come. I wonder what yes then becomes. Um, so yeah, we, we still have some more questions. I'm going to go through those for you. I, I should mention, Stephen, though, I had a very interesting um, chat today. Uh, so I do a radio show here in Kampak um, on one of, the radio one of the leading radio stations. And my guess, one of my guests today was a young man who started his business um, just the beginning of last year and has managed to do very well. CEO at 29, he runs a tour company, um, and it's that I've been interested in doing for a long time. I pioneered um, domestic tourism in, in many ways in, in Uganda, but I think being too lazy to actually go ahead and try and make a business out of it. And yeah. listening to his story today, just really, one, annoyed me, but tickled to see that a guy who is 11, 12 years younger than me, started yeah. doing this, had, had I'd managed to crack it in such a short time. And well, I've asked to buy him coffee and learn from the stuff that he's been able to do in such a short time because I'm thinking, I, I, I let that opportunity go. If he's been able to do that, sure, I can do that as well. Um, and he's gracious allowed to have a few with me, so it's, it's definitely something to go and, and, yeah, out and do. Um, here's some more questions for me. Yeah. Um, let me give some, some questions, then you can respond quickly. Yeah, um, someone is saying that yeah. imagine that you really need to have a business. Hello, Ben. I saw a question here. I want to quickly attend to the person is saying that, um, you know, you notice that mentorship relationship is always initiated by the mentee. 
and uh, does he sometimes yeah exactly i'm, I'm gonna put that out you yeah i feel I, I i i feel you shouldn't be shocked that that is actually the case i mean you're the one that needs something and that's part of why i'm saying you have to be humble let me say this and it's powerful there are two p's you cannot afford to have two p's you cannot afford to have poverty and pride okay you cannot afford to have poverty and pride at the same time okay you can't so if you are going to be poor be humble right if you are going to be proud be rich so you are the one that need the person so go out there and do whatever it takes to get the person to help you they don't owe you that's what i'm saying and what you often don't understand it takes a lot for example i've not been with my family for almost a week and i'm here um you know in a place you know in church cuz i'm able to sleep over ahead for tomorrow's service and um the few times i thought i'm going to have is part of it that we're spending now and um it's already um around 7 almost 7 and by 9 my kids have to go to bed so it's a whole lot of sacrifice even being on this show and sharing this and that's part of what we don't often understand that this so called people became successful or they are successful because of how they manage their time and they don't have so much of it if there's anything i i don't play with is my time i can give you money but i can't give you my time because that's the only thing i trade that's the only thing i can multiply everybody has 24 hours is how effective how well i maximize my 24 hours the time is how well they have become so learn to value time you see we are time wasters in africa that's why they use african time we don't value time we don't understand that time is key and time is more important than money and so if somebody gives you their time value it respect it and or if you are demanding for it understand that is a big ask and if they give it to you is a rare privilege so usually yeah you are the one that needs something but there occasions where people actually go on the on their way to you know look for certain people who are already doing well and meet them and say I want to mentor you I've done that several but that's in the case where you know you just see a young man doing something unique and you know that this person will make it if you can just just give them a little bit push right I've done that several times and people do that so that's what people do that you know just that you know they don't have so much time to do it for too many people for you to even right um talking about time um let's talk a little bit about you uh, because you have people who are wondering look i mean you're doing a million things you probably had uh, maybe four or five events today already um and someone is asking how do you go about balancing um all of this stuff you're running a multi million dollar business you're doing a whole bunch of things you're mentoring people you're a husband you've got to be a father you've got I mean, how, how on earth do you manage to actually stay alive and, and, and breathe uh, no, no matter with all that madness? How, how do you do that? I think people, people, I have a lot of good people around me, um, you know, and, uh, and I think that's also another thing people need to know in Africa. Um, or, you know, yes, it takes one man to, to start a vision, but it takes a nation to execute it, right? So we need to value the role of people in our lives and 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 finding a way to get people to um I I did an article this week talking about the gift of men is one of the biggest prayers you should pray lord give me the gift of men um you know so I'm able to enjoy the gift of men who make what I do very smooth I just got back from Ibadan which is another city um a whole, you know a top business guy in Ibadan organized my entire itinerary got the driver to drive me around plan my itinerary all the people i needed to see making sure i'm able to meet them you know at the exact time and get back to uh, the next itinerary so when you have good people around you who help you to manage your time uh, for example there's no way i'm going to attend your event twice without golden who happened to be my pa she came out with a first class you know very sound young lady um so i have people around me uh, helping to make it happen it comes with its cost of course but 
um, that has helped me. Um, even this event, by the way, we're also streaming it across my social media handle, meaning two, minimum three of my IT guys are on top of this event, right? To make sure they are able to stream it on my YouTube, on my Instagram, on my Facebook. So there's a whole lot of people <laughs> behind the brand and, and they've been of tremendous help. I prayed them into my life and, um, and it's, you know, it comes with its cost, but God has helped me with with that. But more importantly is also um, stepping up your leadership skill, understanding that it takes a whole lot of humility and patience to manage people, right? And it takes a whole lot of, your heart is gonna be crushed. I always invest so much in training people and before you know, once they get good, they leave me. And then I start the process again, and then again, and again, for 12 years, that's what I've been doing. But I just keep doing it, right? Um, so um, it's, it comes with its sacrifices. But part of it is as soon as they get good, they, they go. And so I've just come to accept that as my cross. So I invest so much with those around me. My rule is that you must be better. You must be good. If there's anything you remember about me, it's not that I'm a nice man, but it's that I changed your life when you were with me, something changed about you. I'm not interested in being remembered as a nice person. I'm interested in that I happened to you. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you probably already answered this question in a way, but um, I guess I, I should just add it on so you can, you can deal with it too. Okay. Um, you, a lot of people will make a lot of money and then lose in, in a very short time. You you managed to make uh, a decent amount of money for yourself and have managed to keep most of it and, and actually made it grow. If you were to pick one thing that has helped you grow the business and not necessarily lose a, a lot of money along the way, what would that be? And then the second question on top of that is we've had a whole lot of things say this week about how unemployment is just not a good thing to be in if you're going to be able to succeed as an entrepreneur um and yet it's be a very safe zone for some people so if you've got people who are on this call now and they know um that unemployment is not going to take them anywhere but still too scared to sort of begin to venture out into you know doing entrepreneurship um, what, what advice would you give to them? What, what do they do? Wow, good question, good question. So um, let me start with one that I just saw here. How many hours do I sleep a day? Average of five hours. I believe if you sleep for eight hours a day, by the time you are 75, you slept for 25 years of your life. And if you are not trying to rehearse death, I don't know why, why you will sleep for one third of your life. It doesn't make sense. So I cut it short to, to about five hours a day, So, which is good. I think it's good enough. I'm not realizing that when we die, the Bible says we sleep in the Lord, right? So um, sleeping for 25 years at 75 is too much. <laughs> okay, but um, to your question, I, I, I feel that entrepreneurship is being you know, mistaken for the ultimate secret to success and wealth. I don't think so, right? I, I, I don't think that just because you own a business means you're gonna be wealthy. There are a lot of poor entrepreneurs today. And so I, I, I tell people you have two options. That's why I took time to explain business mentor and investment mentor. If you have a job, go get an investment mentor right now. So the person is able to help you to know how to manage your salary, give you some guide on how to save, and they haven't saved to a level what to do with what you have saved. So the investment part of making money work for you rather than work for money should be the goal of anybody who has a job because we all can't start a business. Even if we want to, we all are not wired to succeed in business. And we all cannot pay the price of business success. It takes a whole lot, a whole lot to be a successful entrepreneur. So if you're not wired for it, you get a job and be contented. You know, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. 
and is ultimately contentment that makes for greatness, right? So be contented where you are, but don't be contented with your investment and your asset. So make sure you save more, you invest what you save, and you make sure you are building wealth for your children's children. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children's children, right? So, and of course, how did I make money and retain money? I actually do not live for money. People do not know. I have created a system where I go broke every month, right? A little money comes in, we buy properties and I'm broke again and I'm hustling again. Then we buy another property with the new one, then I'm broke again and I'm running. So what many of us have done is create luxury when we have some little money, right? So you make, let's say a million dollars, you buy yourself all manner of expensive cars and you build yourself a palatial mansion and then the hunger dies right there. So you surrounded yourself with too much luxury that you're not hungry for success. So what I do is I make sure I create what I call artificial, you know, brokenness, right? So I get broke and I, you know, I go again, hustle the money, then invest again, then hustle, then invest again, then hustle. So I don't like seeing cash. I don't like seeing loose funds around. Um, I want to invest and invest and invest and invest. And I think that's what Africans need to learn. Prioritize asset rather than liability. So I'm always needing money. Right? We have a new project we're about doing, um, you know, a, a, a real estate project. You know, it's going to be very huge and it's going to be costing me almost $100 million, right? It's the biggest uh, move I've ever made. And I'm, you know, so I'm hungry right now. Like I need money right now. So always find a way uh, because what many of us do, you know, we make some little money, we get contented, we relax, we start moving, shaking our body. You know, how are you? You see, God has helped us. You go to your church and they say, glory to God. Hallelujah. When we were growing up, we used to, I struggled, but come on. Mark Zuckerberg, you know, I remember the day I saw him in Nigeria and later went to Kenya. As at that time, he was the seventh richest man in the world. He was trekking on the street of Sule, right? Moving normally, still going, you know, still, you know, but in, a, in Africa, you have some small money. Ah, the world cannot hear what they gain. No. <laughs> so that's what has helped. I create hunger. I'm a very hungry man. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's, actually, that's very, very interesting, um, which I guess leads to the next question. Yes, so it, it is okay. You're a hungry man. You're getting a lot of artificial brokenness. Uh, but surely you've, you've sweated and worked quite hard to get where you are. Um, do you spoil yourself at all? How do you spoil yourself? Um, what, what's, do you have, are, you, are you a toy kind of person? Do you have any toys that, you know, just to indulge yourself once in a while? I, I, I travel a lot. And I think if there's any way I spoil myself is hotels, right? I stay in five-star hotels. And um, I travel a lot. So what I did, and I, it's a wisdom to teach you guys here, monetize your your luxury right monetize your luxury um i don't have a private jet yet but i intend to have one soon but i'm already learning how to monetize a private jet i'm learning how to create a private jet club how to rent out private jets i'm already learning that i mean i don't think i'm gonna have a private jet until maybe in the next five years except something big happens sooner right but that's what I do. And I encourage Africans to learn that there's nothing wrong in spoiling yourself, but find a way to monetize it. So I travel a lot. I love to travel. I love to stay in good hotels. I'm big on good hotels. Um, so what do I do? I then organize seminars so I can be in, in London. So, uh, and I'm in one of the best, St. Pancras Renaissance Hotel is one of the best hotels I stay. And I love staying in. Well, guess what? I will organize one seminar there, charge it, you know, a thousand pounds. Right, that pays the entire bill. Um, you know, and so it, it's one of the secrets of wealthy people that you know a lot of poor people don't know. So you want to compare yourself with them. I think I learned this from one of the Saudi crown prince, right? Uh, I learned this from him when I was studying his life. Monetize your luxury, 
whatever it is that you love to do, monetize. So I travel a lot, I travel a lot. So but I've monetized it, I put seminars, I put conferences, I sell books and all that. So at the end of the day, what usually happens, I make more money. You know, in fact, I leave those countries richer than when I enter those countries, right? Because I find a way to, for example, I know after lockdown, I'm coming to Uganda, that's for sure, right? But trust me, the biggest crime is if you put me in a bad hotel, right? It must be the best hotel in Uganda, right? I have to stay, right? <laughs> But we, we we do we do have some very good hotels. We'll actually we'll put cool. you in one. Uh, you do you play golf? Uh, I'd like to challenge you to oh, a game. Yeah, I love. I'm not good, but I love to play golf. But I'm not good at all, but I love to. Yeah. So you see, but of course we got to put a training so that it pays the bills. So that's just how you do it, right? But yeah. You you talked about this a uh, hundred million pro uh, dollar project you're working on. How how important is it for for people to try and um, again we're talking about taking Africa beyond the horizon, right? How mm -hmm. do you work on taking yourself an individual beyond the horizon and not being comfortable if you've got a job that pays you, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand dollars a month? How do you become hungry enough to and say on a bigger challenge and try and go for something big? without necessarily being greedy and chasing someone uh, instead. A very delicate balance, isn't it? How, how, do you, how do you balance that between staying hungry and, and not becoming uh, a servant and slave to money? Well, I, I actually feel that it, your why is the, the, the answer to that. You must have a big why, right? People are contented um, when they shouldn't be. And there are two types of contentment. There's the contentment of I'm grateful to God for what I have right now. And I am. So my expansion in business is never a function of I'm not contented with what God has given me. Rather is for my big why, which is this helped me create more jobs, right? The recent Bureau of Statistics results show that right now, Nigeria has over 20 something million employment rates, right? Um, and I know that is just plain joke with the figures. So if we launch a hundred million dollar project, there will be job opportunity directly and indirectly for not less than 5,000 to 10,000 people, right, in that project. Also, whatever little profit I'm able to make, I'll be able to send more kids to school, help more widows, do more projects. I'm trying to build some classrooms in some IDP camps in the northern part of Nigeria that is turned by Boko Haram attack. So when you have a big why, right, for why you're expanding and you're trying to grow your business, that whole concept helps you. And it helps you to be fulfilled because you now know, I'm not trying to expand for me, right? How much does my family need? I'm a very simple guy. If you see me in Lagos, you probably will not believe I'm the one, right? You trust me, you won't believe it. I, I live a simple life. You can't even catch me on the street alone, right? That's the level of simplicity to my life. So it isn't about trying to get something for your own personal self. How much do you need? How much? I mean, a lot of times I even take my kids to the suburb and go feed orphans in, in the suburb in Nigeria just to teach them to say, look, that the little even your parents have, you, need, you don't need to take it for granted because some people, this is where they live. They live on the refuse, right? I'm already inculcating that culture to my children. And that's the only way you can be fulfilled as a rich man. A lot of people are rich and they are not fulfilled. They are sorrowful. They are going through depression. And the reason is because they are obsessed with money. Money has, is controlling their money. They've been possessed by money. And such happen when you don't have a big why. You don't have, so for me now, I'm as growing, I have a goal of uh, before I die, I'm gonna send 1 million kids to school. I must impact 1 billion people uh, across the globe, right? So when you have such dreams, and, and trust me, I, I've not even sent my first 100,000 kids to school. So, uh, and I need money to do all these things because these things run to a whole lot of money. I want to build orphanage homes. Uh, I want to build hospitals. I want to build schools where 50% of these kids will be on scholarship and be able to attend for free. So there's so much. And you need money to do that.
Right. Um, I guess um, the, the one last question I'm going to ask you before we wrap up, Stephen, is actually tied to that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people on this call will probably have had this uh, notion of fantasy that the might become rich and uh, get a million dollars or something like that. My problems have ended. Life is per perfect. I can go and chill uh, and simply lie on the beach and, and drink um, cocktails for the rest of, of my life. <laughs> yeah. um, You've gone to a place where you have more money than you need for, for yourself. Um, how much of a fallacy is it, the whole notion that when you become rich and get money, life is perfect, you'll never have another worry in your life after that? I, I think that's the most ridiculous mindset to have. I remember um, my first two million Naira, Naira then, years ago, finished in less than 30 days. I, I had that mindset, like, so I had this vision board and I wrote out a check that I'm gonna get two million naira, you know, and the dream was if I can just get two million naira, my business is, 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 is just off the roof, I'm just successful. I was shocked how in less than 30 days, two million naira went, and I didn't even buy a car from it, okay, many years ago. So, and, and that was when I, I then realized that money, that the fiscal paper is not the real money. There's something called the intangible wealth, right? It's not seen, you can't see it, it's not paper. That is the real wealth that you have. You know, my wealth is not money. I'm, and that's why I'm never moved by what's in my account or what's not. And I even always want to make sure cash is out because my money is not physical, it's not that cash. And you need to get it. The cash is not your wealth. It's, your wealth is here, here in your mind. There's no year I don't spend at least $100,000 to upgrade this mind you're seeing here. There's no year, okay, for, for the last two, three, for the last three, four years, right, since 2016. There's no year I don't spend at least $100,000 to upgrade this mind. And that's really the wealth here. So it's not the fiscal cash, it's not the, so having, uh, you can blow a million dollars in one day. If you've seen people who have made money from lottery, right? They've been worse financially than where they were um, before they, they won the lottery. Their life has been worse. Some of them, in fact, you can do some research. You see some of them, they're homeless today. Many have said, who won lottery? I'm talking of those who won like 10, 10 million pounds, 20 million pounds kind of lottery. Go Google them. Their life has been worse after they won that money than it was before. Many of them became homeless. Some of them became security men, lost everything. So it's not the real physical, it's not the cash that is your wealth. It's the mind, the intangible wealth. So stop leaving this fallacy if I have a million dollars, I'm just going to be okay. I mean, by the time you pay salary, you pay your, some of your bills. Your, and those bills keep increasing by day um so you, you you know all this mindset about uh, i have some money i made it's not true it's not true and and i think that's one of the reason why poverty continue to spread in africa you know we are not sure whether i want to practice capitalism or socialism uh, social whether i want to be a social society socialism or capitalism we're not sure yet uh, whether we just want to be dashing people money whether they merit it or not, or want to promote the culture that people need to work and build businesses and, and, and deserve whatever they get. Africa is not sure yet. And I think it's one of the biggest thing that is messing us up. Well, I feel personally that there has to be a balance of the two. We need to know those who cannot help themselves. People who are in war situations, orphans, widows. Okay, and we need to know those who can help themselves. You have two hands. You can talk. Even if you are not educated, you don't need to beg. Start somewhere. Many of the billionaires we have today never went to school. So the culture has to begin to change from if I can just see $1 million, my life is better. I mean, we've seen artists, um, who, you know, we've seen athletes, people who play soccer. There was a time, I think an Arsenal player when famous, you know, was said that he became homeless after I stopped play, after I stopped playing for Asna, you know, I also went through brutal divorce, 
uh, and he became homeless and he's from African origin. I don't know that you heard that story. So all this, and this guy used to own millions and millions of dollars before. Um, so we need to let go all those fantasy. Money is currency, current from the word current. It has to keep moving, it keep moving. You can't tie it down. If you leave it in your bank account, inflation hits it, it will move. That's why you must consistently provide currently, consistently provide value for you to consistently enjoy cash flow. Um, amazing. I mean, look, uh, there's like a, a million things that I want to engage you on, but I know you've had a very long day, you've been tired. And so uh, I just want to say a big thank you. And I'm going to ask for everyone who is on their call to type a big God bless you for Stephen Akintayo, if he's been a blessing to you. Can you, everyone, can you please type a, a big God bless you? Uh, it might not seem like a deal to you, but I'm sure he'll appreciate um, seeing that big God bless you from him. So go ahead, type God bless you, God bless you for Stephen Akintayo. Uh, let's say a big thank you for taking off your time and, and, and wealth and your wisdom. We, we really appreciate that. Um, go follow him, look for him on Twitter, look for him on Facebook, look for him on YouTube. And go on edge. The beautiful thing about social media now is that you're able to go and, and connect. And it might be two weeks, it might be a month from now, but he'll probably go and see that comment and see that you were a blessing. Um, and then he'll, he'll remember that he had an impact on someone's life. Uh, let's help him to that goal of impacting a billion people. And I'm sure by letting him know that you've impacted, it will help him use that number day by day until it actually gets to a good. Right. Um, we just have a few minutes to wrap up, and I'm going to do now is hand over to Emma Osanga, who is going to come and tell us what we need to do going forward, because, I mean, we've had a lot of things this week, but I think what's most important is what we do with them, and that becomes really important. So I'm going to ask Emma to come and help us wrap up now by telling us what do we do now, where do we go as we begin to wrap up Inspire 2020 for this year. Emma, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Stephen, for those wonderful, wonderful, wonderful session. We could have had you for the whole, the whole night uh, tonight. So we just want to thank you for that uh, and appreciate you very, very much. Again, I think we've had a very, um, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Emma. Yes. Yeah. Just continue. All right. Can you see my screen? No, you stop sharing. No. Okay, I'll just uh, share again. Apologies for that. All right, so what I want us to discuss is just uh, uh, very, very quickly, I want us to discuss um, the way forward, what we do uh, having gone through this uh, wonderful week, uh, you all agree with me that for sure we've just been scratching the surface and that's why we wanted to keep Steven uh, as long as uh, as we could, uh, despite the fact that we've had a long day. So we wanted to just um, uh, bring to your attention what what is next. You've had this, uh, most of the speakers had just one hour to talk to you. What are you going to do to be able to engage more in these topics? And that's really what I want to share with you. But first of all, I just want to re-emphasize re that one, uh, Inspire is transformed. Uh, you, Inspire will not be the same again. I want to confirm to you that we've gone regional uh, for the Uganda team. You've lost uh, uh, the, the home and away. Inspire is now regional uh, as we speak. Uh, so be sure Inspire is now continent, it's no longer an Ugandan thing. Uh, secondly, I wanted to uh, also emphasize that we go digital. For, for you to be able to reach as many as possible, you need to definitely go digital. There's no way you can reach uh, a billion people and, or a million people without going digital. So we'll be pushing a lot of digital uh, platforms in delivering what we deliver. Uh, and then thirdly, Inspire is a platform. Uh, we're thinking platform, we're thinking big. We're going to create this platform, digital platform, that will allow us to connect all the good work that is happening across uh, the continent 
and to be able to connect you to that piece of work. So those are three things that I would want to just highlight to you that those are changes that you see coming uh, from an Inspire perspective. Uh, be expect and look out, you definitely see those changes coming. Number, number two, I just wanted to say that we want you to uh, partner with us and we've designed a partnership form uh, for you to, be, to partner with us in any way that you can. Uh, and, and those forms are available on our website. That's the link. Do register. We've talked about the need for, for mentors. If you want to be a mentor to, uh, to people out there, please do register with us. We want to connect you with people who are looking for mentors. You saw uh, Stephen asking us to really take a, a, a try and fix that gap. So if you want to participate with us, whether you want to uh, mentor, train, be a publisher or speaker or a facilitator, please do let us know. Go to our website uh, at inspiresynergy.org slash partners, and you'll be able to enroll for us to be able to work together with you. This work, and, and I remember what Stephen was saying, that you can have a vision, one man can have a vision, but you need a nation to execute it. So we need you as, as, as partners. Uh, we really ask that you join us in this journey to transform and take Africa to the new horizon. Uh, I also wanted to just emphasize that Inspire has become an ecosystem. We can see we have quite a number of partners, people who are working with us, and will continue to grow this uh, this this uh, list of ecosystem. Our our vision is to try to create a platform that will enable us to connect these ecosystems. Uh, and one of the questions that we've been asking is, what are we going to do? to get more, to get deep into some of the materials that were covered this week. I can tell you that some of our partners have already offered uh, to help you uh, be able to in, uh, enrich yourself with, in detail with what has been discussed. And we have, uh, we'll be making these available to you. So it's very important for you to register as a partner or, or enroll as a member so that we'll be able to connect you with these uh, opportunities from all uh, these different uh, stakeholders that we work with. So Inspire is not just a single organization, it's an ecosystem. Our view is that we don't need to create a new, we can connect with what is already existing and be able to connect you, whether it's the women issues, uh, whether it's the disrupt yourself or be disrupted, we will be able to connect you with, uh, with these opportunities. So just do partner with us if you want to be part of the, uh, uh, this engagement. Uh, there are some that are already uh, starting soon. So the faster you register and we'll share this path with you, the, the quicker we'll be able to get you into some of these programs to, to in, uh, enrich yourself with more knowledge from the speakers that we've had this week. Uh, and then lastly, I just wanted to uh, tell you that there are some of the, uh, most of the, the guys we've had speak have authored books. So we recommend that you pick these books and many more books that are available for you to uh, go deeper in the subject. We've had fantastic le lessons with subjects this, this week. So we really just encourage you to take these books and be able to go deeper in these different subjects. Uh, and uh, for purposes of those who want to get on straight away, we'll, uh, we'll be partnering with, uh, uh, with uh, Patrick, who talked about the biblical economics, and they will be running some uh, series of webinars. We'll be able to connect you if you express your interest as one of uh, those who want to be engaged. With you. So there will be a number of these. Uh, the most important thing is for you to register with us, as, uh, to, be, to become partner with us, and, and to, to express interest in these subject areas. Uh, in terms of way forward, I think that's our detailed way forward on how we can help.